Unlike gas and diesel generators, the power pellet has a few important maintenance items that need to be done every day. Right after you shut down is the best time to clean the throttle, as tar will still be warm and soft and easier to wipe off, and then it won't gunk up the throttle as it cools off. Check the throttle for smooth action and rinse the throttle with alcohol, then wipe it off as described in the lesson on preparing to run the power pellet. While you have the coupler off the throttle, you should drain any liquid that may have built up in the pipe between the filter and the engine. Use your screwdriver or nut driver to loosen the hose clamp on the filter end as well, and then pull off this length of pipe and let any liquid in it run out. The best time for the rest of the other routine daily maintenance is before you start it again, when everything will be nice and cool. This includes emptying the condensate vessel, cyclone can, and the ash collection vessel. Unlike gas and diesel generators, the power pellet has a few important maintenance items that need to be done every day. All of these are designed to hold a day's worth of waste, so you should only have to do this once a day. But depending on your feedstock and the way you run your machine, you may have to empty them more often. Since your mileage may vary, you should pay attention and check yours to decide how often you need to empty them on your particular machine. Just remember that trying to run with any of them full can be very bad for your machine. And also remember, none of these should be opened while the machine is running or hot. If you can see any liquid through the sight glass on the condensate vessel, you only have a few hours of runtime left, and you may be forced to shut down to empty it. You can keep this from happening if you just make a habit of draining it each time before you start your power pellet, whether you see anything in the glass or not. Put a clear 6 mm plastic tube on the drain and stick it into a 1 liter can, jar, or bottle before you open the valve. Turn the drain cock clockwise to open it. And when it's finished draining, don't forget to close the valve. This liquid is very dirty, but you can get rid of it by mixing it with a bunch of feedstock, letting it dry out, and then burning it in the machine. The cyclone ash can should hold a day's worth of ash and charcoal dust, but you should always empty it before you start up. Again, this is liable to be full of toxic gas, so be sure you have plenty of fresh air when you open it and avoid breathing in the dust and soot as well. Remove the can from the bottom of the cyclone by taking hold of the handles and turning it to the left, about 50 millimeters, or about 15 degrees. It should come loose then. Empty the can out, then put it back on by lining up the pegs inside the can with the slots and turning them to the right. Make sure that the rubber gasket is in place and pretty clean, and that you hold it down nice and snug. Burying the dust in the ground is a great way to get rid of it. The ash collection vessel should also be able to hold a day's worth of char ash, depending on what sort of feedstock you are burning. But it's best if you make a habit of always emptying it before you start up your power pellet. The more often you open and empty these containers, the better you'll be able to learn the ins and outs of just how your power pellet works in the particular way you're using it. Of course, you'll remember that these will also have toxic gases in them and can only be opened when your power pellet is not running and cooled off enough to handle. The ash collection vessel is held on by the same sort of sanitary clamp that you'll remember on the reactor viewport with its little wing nut that you can loosen and pivot out of the notch to the other side and flip it open. Once the clamp is off, the whole vessel will come loose. You empty it through the access port on its top, which is held on with a bigger sanitary clamp identical to the one on the viewport. Just take off the round cover to open, then turn it over to shake out all the char ash. Again, burying this in the ground is a good way to dispose of it. Don't forget the round white plastic seals between the two sides of both of these connections and make sure they are in place and fairly clean when you tighten the wing nuts nice and snug with your fingers. That finishes up our lessons on operating the power pallet. The next lecture will be a short review and then our final quiz. 
congratulations, you're almost finished.